you're about to witness the most pissed off Optimus Prime so far in the Energon universe, and it's awesome. What's up everyone, James here, and I hope you're excited to see the finale of this second arc. Make sure you hit that like button, and let's get into it. So this opens on the arc, with Carly watching on the ship's monitors the Autobots battle with the Decepticons, and she sees Cliffjumper is the Decepticons hostage. On the battlefield, Shockwave transforms into his gun mode for Soundwave to carry, and says, Decepticons, let us be done with this Autobot blight forever. The Autobots are surrounded, but they aren't backing down. There is just blast fire coming from all directions, it's nuts. The Autobots wonder where Ultra Magnus is, and I hate to tell you all this, but unfortunately, Magnus is not redeeming himself in this issue, he is really gone. What happens next though kind of makes up for that, and it's incredible. Carly hops into her van and drives through Skywarp's portal. At the same time, Wheeljack asks Optimus about the charges, and Optimus answers that Alita planted them, but he doesn't want to trigger them with Cliffjumper so close to the Nemesis. Out of nowhere, Carly arrives and yells on the battlefield, when are you all gonna learn? I'm here to stay, and I'm here to fight. She drives right off the Nemesis and rams right into Soundwave, freeing Cliffjumper from his grasp. Cliffjumper ends up on top of her van, and Carly apologizes for not being there for him. This happy reunion doesn't last long though, because Devastator smashes Carly's van. Optimus takes advantage of Carly's diversion and says, Autobots, let's get our fallen brother. Charge! The Autobots roll out. Luckily, Carly was left unscathed from Devastator's attack. Cliffjumper manages to pull her out of the van, but his arm is stuck. Devastator straight up punts Cliffjumper along with the remains of Carly's van. Man, Cliffjumper can't catch a break because Devastator's kick sends him flying through Shockwave's portal to Cybertron. On Cybertron, as the Combaticons are about to go through the portal to join the fight, Cliffjumper ends up being slammed right into them, which I guess is a good thing. God, this issue is so good, and it's about to get even better, because let me tell you guys how awesome Optimus is. While Devastator is gloating, Optimus jumps into the whirlpool surrounding the Nemesis. Using it to get into Devastator's face, he blasts him right in the face with Megatron's fusion cannon. He yells, now Alita. Alita drives up to Devastator in her vehicle mode, wraps her hook line around Devastator's legs, causing the combiner to fall right on top of Shockwave's harvester. Now without the endless supply of Energon, this disconnects the supply of it that was feeding the space bridge. Wheeljack reports to Optimus that Cybertron is beginning to go back through the portal, returning to its place in the galaxy. However, he also reports the Nemesis' beam is active, which means the portal is still active. Shockwave uses it to retreat, vowing to bring back reinforcements. Optimus chases after him, but Wheeljack tells him they should just use the charges and blow up the Nemesis because it would send Cybertron back right now. Optimus responds, not yet, because he refuses to leave Cliffjumper behind again. On Cybertron, Shockwave orders the Combaticons to kill Cliffjumper. But at that moment, Vortex looks behind him and sees Optimus and says, oh shit. Optimus smashes his face into the ground and proceeds to savagely injure and beat down the rest of the Combaticons. This might be my third favorite Optimus Prime moment in the Energon universe so far. He is not playing any games. The Combaticons are so terrified of him that they run away. Shockwave calls them cowards and orders them to stand and fight. Optimus approaches him, saying, come on then. When Shockwave threatens to kill Cliffjumper if he comes any closer, Optimus straight up blasts off his cannon arm before he can even finish his threat. Optimus is about to beat the brakes off of Shockwave, because he tosses aside his Ion Blaster and says to Shockwave, this is all you do, Shockwave? Ratchet, Magnus, life. All you do is take away good, take away life. Optimus proceeds to give Shockwave the beating of his life with his bare hands. Now, this isn't the crazy part. What is, is while he is gripping Shockwave's head, 
he experiences that vision he had before of him holding a baby until it turns into a crazy nightmare, a possible vision of the future. He sees his hands as claws while wires cover and consume the baby. Now, what if Optimus is seeing himself as Nemesis Prime? That would be insane. Optimus loses control of himself and he crushes Shockwave's head. The Devil Transformer is dead. Optimus quickly regains his senses, but he is horrified by what he's done. What's interesting is Alita shows up having witnessed this and tells him that his old self is returning. But Optimus responds that he isn't like that anymore. So at some point, maybe we'll learn all about Optimus's dark and rageful side. Optimus notices Cybertron is almost done returning to its galaxy, so he tells Cliffjumper and Alita they must return to Earth. Optimus, while carrying Cliffjumper, says, let's go home. But when he's about to step through the portal, out of nowhere, Alita destroys it and replies, you are home, Optimus. The Autobot Resistance needs you here. We can use all this Energon taken together. Optimus refuses because it's Energon taken from life on Earth. When Optimus tries to activate the charges, Alita tells him not to bother because she never set them in the first place. This is where the debate of how far are you willing to go to save your home and those you love happens between these two. Optimus asks Alita, are you willing to feed Cybertron with the blood of Earth? Alita answers, yes, especially when it's dying. Do you think I want this? Wanted to force your hand? So many have died, and their deaths have to mean something. This could be that something. Optimus points Megatron's fusion cannon at the Energon tanks and replies, Earth needs me. Earth needs us. Alita tries to plead with him. She says, your people need you. I need you. Don't abandon us again. Optimus responds, I'm sorry, Alita, and he fires at the tanks. The Energon explodes, creating a massive blast that severs the connection between the Nemesis and Shockwave's fortress, closing the portal. One thing Optimus didn't account for, though, was that this blast took a massive chunk of Cybertron, leaving it in Earth's galaxy. After recovering from the blast, Alita says, you chose Earth over us. This massive chunk of Cybertron begins falling into Earth's atmosphere along with Optimus. He is burning up, just being engulfed in flames. He says, if this is the end of my spark, then I thank the Primes that this will be my last sight. He is taken back by Earth's beauty. However, this is not the end of Optimus Prime, because Beachcomber riding his surfboard shows up. He rode up the whirlpool current created by the Nemesis and saves Optimus. Notice that Optimus has lost Megatron's fusion cannon arm. Maybe Wiljack though will be able to repair it, but maybe not. As this piece of Cybertron falls into Earth's ocean, Optimus asks himself, what have I done? There are going to be major consequences because of Optimus' decision. He might have just given Earth access to Cybertronian tech, he hurt and betrayed Alita, at least in her eyes, let Cybertron continue to die, and we have no idea what the hell happened to Cliffjumper. This finale was awesome. Now, before I end the video, I want to propose one theory to you all. We saw Shockwave clearly dead, but what if that wasn't the real Shockwave? Hear me out, some of you have commented on this, and I've seen it online on forums. Shockwave was definitely emotional in this series, which as you know, is not the purely logical being we're used to knowing. So what if Daniel Warren Johnson is treating Shockwave like DC's Brainiac or Marvel's Ultron, where Shockwave has created duplicates of himself, but the hiccup he's having with his clones is they act like they're the real Shockwave, or maybe just act with emotion over time. Either way, maybe the real Shockwave is alive and hidden on Cybertron or somewhere else in the galaxy. Let me know what you all think about that. I cannot wait for the next issue where we will get Starscream's origin. 
that's the end of the video. Make sure you subscribe, help me reach 50,000 subscribers, and follow the Go Beyond Comics podcast. Other than that, have an awesome day, everyone, and always remember every day to go beyond.